Hi, it's Kyle from Bytewing Games, and today we're taking a look at Oros. Oros is a game for one to four players that takes about 30 minutes per player, so you can expect somewhere between 30 and 120 minutes. It is designed by Brant Brinkerhoff and is being published by Ash Games this summer 2021 on Kickstarter. In Oros, you are creating and manipulating land. The board is a map that you will lay land tiles on. On your turn, you will be able to shift and move the land tiles, colliding them together, forming larger and larger land tiles, mountains, that you'll build sacred sites on. And that's really the crux of the game is building sacred sites. These sacred sites provide knowledge points or victory points in the game. The three ways to gain knowledge points are by building sacred sites, ascending the ziggurat, each space being worth a point, and also different areas on your player mat. On your turn, you get to take three actions. Essentially, your actions are leading up to you having a follower on a mountain and being able to build a sacred site. They can only be built on mountains. So on your turn, you have a follower on a mountain. You take the action to build a sacred site. That will give you knowledge points, and it will also let you ascend up the ziggurat, which again gives you additional points. Sacred sites are kind of a big deal, but my follower is not on a mountain. So, as one of my actions, I can move a follower one space to be on the mountain and then build a sacred site. But the original setup doesn't have any mountains on the board, so how do I form mountains? You can collide land tiles together. You can shift three land tiles into another set of land tiles. And if you have the largest land tiles collide together, that forms a mountain. You can then move your worker there and build a sacred site. Another thing you can do on your turn is to actually shift an entire row of tiles. That will allow you to either place land tiles where they need to be so you can collide them, or move your follower to a place where they can actually connect to a mountain. Another action you can take is to erupt volcanoes. Erupting volcanoes, again, is all about either creating landforms so that you can make mountains, or making a way for you to find yourself to a mountain so that you can, again, build a sacred site. The player board is where you will move followers to take your three actions on your turn. As you can see, there's a series of spaces for each of the actions. There's also a little cap here. Throughout the game, you have the potential to increase this wisdom cap, which increases your ability for each of the actions. For example, starting off the game, you can move a follower just one space. But you can see there's the potential to move the follower two, three, or even five spaces on your turn. You need wisdom to be able to do that. Wisdom can be gained from building sacred sites, or one of the actions allows you to move followers in such a way that you can gain wisdom. So on your turn, you will take the actions to gain wisdom to increase your abilities, to shift and manipulate the land to create mountains, to move your followers to these mountains, and then to build sacred sites. Each mountain can hold three sacred sites, however each player can only build one sacred site per mountain. The game will end once one player has ascended to the top of the ziggurat. Now that we have a basic overview of the game, let's talk about what makes Oros great. I really enjoy the player mats and how you take the actions. In order to take an action, you have to move a follower to that space. But there can only be one follower per action space. And so if your follower is on a certain action space and you want to take that action, you have to move that follower from the action space to a different action space and use one of your actions. And then as a second action, you can actually take the action that you originally wanted to do. And so the space that you take a follower from is just as important as the space you place the follower on because you really have to think about your next step. I love the tech tree feel of the game. As you start the game, you feel very limited in what you can do. For example, to collide tiles, you have to move three land tiles to collide into another set of tiles but you can unlock the ability to move just one land tile. That really gives you the power to create mountains and manipulate the land in a better way that other players couldn't. You can also unlock the ability to move your demigod up the ziggurat one space every time you take that action. That's a huge deal because every step of the ziggurat is one point. And on top of that, one thing that I really enjoy about the game is that you, you can only have one player per spot on the ziggurat. So for example, if I'm blue and just one space behind each of the other players, I ascend one space when I take this action. But I'll actually move four spaces because I can't end on the same space as another player. 
but the other players can do the same. So there's a very interesting dynamic of when you choose to take certain actions so that you can ascend the ziggurat and not just go one space, but leapfrog over other players, but try not to let them leapfrog over you. A very interesting dynamic there in the game that I absolutely love. Back to the player mat. Oros rewards you for specializing in one of your actions. By the end, you can get a certain number of knowledge points for having upgraded. But you can also choose to diversify, and if you increase your wisdom caps on all of your abilities, you will earn a certain number of points at the end of the game, and you'll also unlock another follower. Let's talk about the solo mode in Oros. Each player mat is double-sided, one for a human player and the other for an AI, an automa. Uh, this automa has a deck of cards. On their turn, you'll flip a card and it will specify a few things that they will do. Uh, they can create mountains, they can build sacred shrines, and they can do a whole bunch of different things on their turn. In order to play Oros, you do have to have three players. That could be one human and two automas, or two humans and one automa, but there do always have to be three actual demigods playing the game. I definitely prefer the game with all human players. I like the interaction. It's a little more predictable. The Automa do some things that players can't always do and maybe don't make the most sense, and so it's harder to predict what's going to happen. That's not to say that Automa aren't done well. They are done very, very well. I just personally prefer the game uh, with actual players rather than with the Automa. On to my final thoughts. Oros is a masterful creation. You are colliding tiles. You are creating mountains. You're erupting volcanoes. Oros is a powerful game that makes you feel powerful. There are a lot of moving pieces, literally. The, the board has a very three-dimensional feel to it. As you shift tiles, they aren't bound by the edge of the board, but they actually wrap around the board. And that being said, this game is a little bit puzzly. If, if you're someone that likes to take your thinking cap off and just sit back and relax with your friends and, and pull out a light game, this game probably isn't for you. But if you're someone that really likes the puzzly nature of games, someone that likes to discover different avenues to victory and, and wants to take a few plays to really master a game, Oros is going to be right up your alley. There are a lot of different paths and methods to win this game, and that makes it a lot of fun. I can't speak to the final production of this game. This is just a prototype. But if it's anything like this prototype, we're going to be in for a pleasant experience. The, the art is beautiful on it, the volcanoes are very fun and satisfying to place and to erupt. A very, very well produced game. If you have any questions about it, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Until next time.